Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tenney coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas. We offer everything on the YouTube channel is free. On the booking page, we have two things that are free. This live stream overtime session we offer every now and again. I don't offer it all the time. But if you're looking for some free uh, access to content, uh, you can find it. We have free office hours as well. The office hours are only for people who have paid uh, for a class. But this is completely free for whoever. And we, uh, in the chat, want to go over spreads. And so there are nine potential test questions about spreads on the test. Can you identify a spread? Can you determine whether it is a credit or a debit spread? Let's call that number two. I call this, the way I say this here as a kind of a memory aid device is don't hate the eight. Yeah. Don't hate and the I, eight. And I know all of the steps, but I feel yeah. like when I actually see the question, it's hard for me to apply. Well, do you, you now you can go into the channel search bar and put spread and everything will come up and you can watch me do practice questions, Kaplan practice questions. You can watch me do, uh, I have whole lectures on missing premiums. So that would be another thing you could do besides just the steps. But if you do the steps, uh, I'd be interesting. So are you using who's your test prep vendor? Um, I use STC. So just, you know, I don't can't see what you're looking at STC, but you're welcome to send me cut and paste okay. whatever you're looking at. And what I would tell you is that whether you can take it out of the phraseology or not, if you do these eight things, whatever they want to know, you have the answer. Now, you may not. Uh, be comfortable with the test phraseology, but, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be something that's there, right? So, and these are the eight things you got to be able to do. So somehow, some way, this is what they're asking. You know, I like I saw one today I was helping somebody with, and uh, theirs was, uh, it, the spread would be profitable at all the following prices except, right? And then you got to have, be able to kind of look at what you've done and do that and break even. And the last thing we got to be able to do, uh, Annie, after we get this done, I'll, I'll take care of that for you. So uh, let's see. And the last thing we got to do bullish. is bullish or bearish. Now, the conversation I'm going to have with you is not testable. I will tell you at what point the conversation becomes testable. Okay. All right. So here is somebody who is very, very foolish. Can you tell me why that person is uh, pretty foolish? Because they um, that's a naked call. So it's right on, right on. That's really just not smart. You know, uh, again, not testable. But, you know, when I look at this, I like to think of options being about floors and ceilings. And there's a floor there at 180. And I highly recommend the other thing you might want to consider in terms of process is what are you looking at? What you're looking at is an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price, XP means strike price. And, you know, if I was going to make a visual representation of this very dumb bear, of all the bears in the woods, this is a pretty damn dumb bear. Because, you know, for that 12 points, you're taking unlimited risk. And here's 180, and that's what I mean by the four. 180 or less, the contract expires, and you get to keep the money. Woohoo! You agree to be a potential victim. Nobody victimizes you and you walk with the money. And so that's what I mean by this being the floor here at 180. But the problem is there is no ceiling. You know, uh, how far up could Apple go? All the way. And so, you know, if I were your broker, again, the conversation is not testable. I would say, Sarah, don't be a dumb bear. You know, what I highly recommend you do is put in a ceiling. You know, what I would suggest we do is take part of our money and just in case this thing blows up on us, let's buy one Apple December 190 call at three. 
and we're putting in now a ceiling. Options are all about floors and ceilings. Again, I have not shared with you any test question yet. I'm just talking about don't do a naked call because naked calls are pretty stupid. And the reason I kind of like this is because if we do what I'm suggesting here, Sarah, we will have put in a ceiling. You know, I think of options being about floors and ceilings. And what we're saying here is we don't want to play past 190. And that's the whole point of a spread. Now, spread means difference. So that's what the word spread means, right? What's the spread in tonight's game? I'm asking, what is the difference in the scores? And some people have a bet tonight where they needed to be outside of that spread to win their bet. And there's other people tonight that are betting on the difference, because that's what spread means, difference, that the score will be in between those two number, whatever those that spread is. Right? Kind of same thing with spreads in, in our, our world here. And as I said, I think of this as our ceiling. Okay, first test question. The first test question is you have to be able to identify a spread. Now, even if that wasn't a test question, I just told you it is. But even if it wasn't, it is. If you can't identify it, you're going to be dead in the water. You're just going to be staring at it going, I don't know. You know, B, that's not a good strategy. <laughs> I was two drinking guy today and... I, everything he looked at, he said, was a straddle. I said, you know, I said, no, it's not, right? So uh, you always, when you have a spread, are going to net. Because that's, again, what the spread means. So you're either going to combine the premiums or you're going to net the premiums, depending on what you're looking at. And again, what I like to do is I kind of like to write, okay, what am I looking at in terms of contract specifications? Here, what I'm looking at is a choice to buy the stock. So I now have that choice to buy the stock at the strike price, offsetting my obligation to sell, which is kind of cool. It's a, a smart way to go about it. Rather than being a dumb bear, I'm kind of a smart bear now because I've offset my obligation with a choice. And again, I will tell you when it becomes testable, the only test question we've done thus far is that we're looking at a spread. Now, all the action in a spread takes place between these strikes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the whole point of a spread. I'm saying I want to play between these two things and I don't want to play no more. All right. So our next test question, now, if we get this right, we can rock and roll. So it's a credit get, spread. Right on. If we get credit, we know credit expire narrow and we've got our gain. And if we get debit, we know debit exercise widen. We got our loss. Uh, you are correct that this is a credit spread. And the way we did that, or I hope the way you did it, you know, uh, is you netted those premiums. So that is dollars in. And this is dollars out. And so a credit spread, you were correct, is when we have more dollars in than we have dollars out. And indeed, this is a credit spread. And that could have been a test question, like, you know, what kind of, what are you looking at? And you would have to tell me that this is a credit call spread. Mm-hmm. Uh, this credit is dying. Now, this is a common theme. And so this ha shouldn't be something that throws you for a loop. Is that any time you have an option position where you collect money, the best case is you agree to be a potential victim and nobody victimizes you. You get to keep the money. You get to go neener, neener, neener. Right? And so here, our max gain, let's just label this in a credit spread, our max gain in a credit spread is the net credit. In this case, whenever so, it's a, a credit spread, it, the max, your max gain. it will always be max gain is the net premium. Always, always. By the way, that's a common theme, by the way. When you sell a call, you sell a put, you sell a straddle, you sell a spread. Whenever you're short a call, short a put, short a straddle, short a spread, selling a spread, any of those positions. The best case is you agree to be a potential victim, nobody victimizes you, and you walk with the money. 180 or lower, 180 or lower, the contracts will expire worthless. And you'll go neener, neener, neener. Now, I think you're kind of a jerk of a customer if you say, well, Dean, had I done the naked calls, I would have made $1,200. 
I said, well, yeah, that's true, Sarah, but you would have been taking all kinds of risk. I mean, I just think that's kind of a stupid, you know, mm -hmm. game loss situation. Now, there's a couple ways to proceed on our next thing here. One way to proceed ugh, is to memorize that the maximum loss on a credit spread is the difference in the strikes less of that credit. I think it's easier to say, okay, well, the whole point of the spread is I want to play between 180 and 190, and then I don't want to play no more. There's only 10 points to be made or lost in this spread. And of those 10 points, I have collected nine of them. Now, that's the way I like to think of it. So nine points to be, uh, 10 points to be made or lost. I've collected nine. And so I like to say, okay, well, nine plus something, nine plus something equals 10 because the gain and the loss test taking trick always equals the difference in the strikes because that is the whole point of this strategy. The whole point of a spread strategy wise is saying you want to play between these two numbers. And so let's just put this here. Boom. There's our equal sign. Let's make it a little bigger. And we know that uh, whatever the gain and loss are, add up to 15. So one thing you can do on the, on the test is you can eliminate any offer made to you of gain and loss that doesn't equal 15. Whatever these two numbers are, they have to equal the difference in the strikes because that's the whole point. This would be 15. Do you need some help with arithmetic? I was going to say, hold on. <laughs> I was just seeing if you're I thought it was the premiums first, but... Yeah, no, it doesn't, you know, okay. be, Keep an eye on me. <laughs> <Been a long, laughs> uh, and let's get this here. So a couple ways to proceed, as I said, you could either kind of say, okay, well, you know, I can memorize that it's the difference in the strikes uh, less the credit, or I think the easier way to proceed is just say, okay, well, that whatever that number is, it has to make something add up to 10. And again, once you get the menu done, then you can think about it. What I mean by that is don't start thinking about it until you get the menu done. But, you know, we think about it. If you buy the stock at 190, which you have a choice to do, and you deliver at uh, 180, which you're obliged to do, you'd lose 10. Nine's in your account. So you lose one. But uh, don't think about that until you get the menu done. But as we said, the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. All the action in a spread is between the strikes. Because that's the whole point of a spread. Okay, let's put that over here. Max loss, difference in the strikes. Less the net credit. And as we said that uh, we already know that whatever those two numbers are, they're going to add up to 15. Because that's the whole point, right? And we have these two numbers now. We have our gain of nine. Why do I, I must have been doing a spread with 15 earlier. 10. <laughs> Boom. And uh, and that means this is what. So again, it'd be bad form on the test to give me an answer. If they say max gain, max loss, that doesn't add up to 10. Now, the break-even test taking trick, the break-even has to be somewhere within that range. So if they ask you the break-even on the test, you can eliminate anything offered to you that's so, outside that range. And that alone gets you a 50-50. It's got to be something between 180 and 190. It should be 189. You are correct. You are correct, right? And that makes sense. Here's visually, there's no graphing on the test, but here is this, what that looks like visually is the break-even. Right, that's what that looks like visually in terms of a graph. Right, we're saying we want to play. The reason I'm fumbling around with this spread, Sarah, is because I made a hellacious spread. You would never find this in the real world if you do call me, where we can make nine and lose one. Sign me up. Right, that's a great risk reward ratio. It's certainly better than a naked call. Right, yeah. that's why people shouldn't do naked calls because if somebody's going to do a naked call, that means that they 
they don't know about credit call spreads. I mean, you know, again, the conversation is intestable, but why in the heck would you do that? That's just stupid. When you could do this. And, you know, instead of making uh, 12 and losing unlimited sums of money, now instead of making 12, you can make nine, but you can only lose... 100. Yeah, that's a, that's just a much better. Now, you were correct, it's 89, but we do have a memory aid device for okay. how to remember that it's 189. You were correct. You were correct. And that memory aid device is cow. So if it's a call spread, the way we're going to get the break even is we're going to add that net premium to that lower strike. It doesn't matter, by the way, if it's a debit or credit, it doesn't matter call add to the lower call add to the lower now again stay menu driven when you get the menu done then you can think about it right? you can say okay well if i buy the stock at 189 and i deliver at 180 i lose nine points i've got nine points i break even you know lots of ways to do spreads lots of ways to do spreads you know, I'm just going to show you, I'm just illustrating to you that indeed this is the break even, right? So here's the one. Uh, here, whoop. Here is uh, what this looks like in a T, right? So here is our 12 we brought in. Let's put that in green. And here is our three that we paid out. And now I'm just illustrating the break-even. The dominant leg, by the way, is your obligation to sell at 180. And, you know, uh, this is another way you could do this. You could say, okay, well, ultimately, I need a number that would make the columns balance. Because that's what break-even is. I'm just il illustrating that, indeed, 189 is the break-even. Because it ends up being same dollars out as dollars in. Now, since you were kind enough, Sarah, to join me tonight, I'm going to share with you a trick that I don't share in terms of any other place. But uh, if you don't want to memorize Cal, assuming you know that the dominant leg is always the one with the larger premium, mm -hmm. the other way you could get the break even is to plug in that dominant leg and then just shop your answer set and just all the numbers they offer you, just keep plugging them in until one of the numbers makes the columns what? Even. Because that's what break even is, right? So that's another way to get the break even is to plug in the dominant leg into the T and then just go through it by process of elimination. Yeah, uh, you know, there's lots of different ways to do do options, but I always say fire up the T. If if you get good at a T, tracking money in and out, mm -hmm. you're good at contract specification. In other words, you're not fumbling around that you have an obligation to sell at 180. You know, and then, you know, you're going to say, hey, give me a bunch of option questions, right? Now, remember, we have a memory aid device for puts. Do you know what that is? If this was a put. Put, well, subtract from the higher. Right on, right? Call up, put down. Call up, put down. And then the last thing we got to be able to do on a spread is, is it bullish or bearish? And again, the larger premium dominates the position. And so you are a bear, but let me tell you something, Sarah. You are a damn smart bear <laughs> because you know how to take the money without taking all the what? The risk. The risk, right? And one of the smartest bears in the woods would be you, be you, <laughs> right? As a bear, that's a pretty strong thing. I'm going to show you another thing that I don't usually show. So one more thing, and then we'll move on to uh, Annie's question. Okay. So the other thing uh, that you can think about is we have two... Uh, directional things, right? We're either buying volatility or we're selling volatility. And, you know, usually we're buying or selling directional volatility. So what I mean by that is if I buy a call, a long call, I got to be right about three things. I got to be right about direction. I got to be right about how far up... So direction up, how far up? Because I got cover my out-of-pocket cost and I got to be right about timing, right? Or I'm selling volatility. Yeah. 
And here we go here over if I'm a bear. If I buy a put, I'm buying downward volatility. I'm buying downward volatility. And if I'm short a call, I'm selling it. You're either buying or selling volatility. There's no test questions there. So I'm giving you, you guys are getting a little primer on trading options, right? I should make you subscribe to Dean's options <laughs> as a strategic investment. So uh, what I like in a debit call spread is it lowers my out-of-pocket cost, right? So I help, I sell the higher strike to help me pay for the lower strike. And by lowering my out-of-pocket cost, I lower the amount of upward volatility I need. A debit call spread is bullish, right? And then a short put is kind of fit silly here to do a short put because, you know, you, somebody could stick it to you and you're going to be paying cash equal to the aggregate exercise price for a stock that's probably worthless, right? Could be worthless. And so what I highly recommend is that we take some of our money and just in case buy a lower strike put. And so that way this thing blows up on us and somebody sticks it to us we can stick it to the next guy. That's what a credit put spread is all about, right? How to take, again, just like I just showed you, how to take the money without taking all the what? Risk. Yeah, you know, I hate it when clients don't listen to us. I mean, when I was a practitioner, I had a, a foolish customer and he wanted to write the 240 puts. And I said, Mark, you're writing 10 240 puts. You're going to have an obligation to buy a thousand shares at 240. That's $240,000. Now, good news, you do have that cash in your account. But why don't you take some of that money and buy a 220 put? Just in case. That way, if it blows up on you and somebody sticks it to you, you can stick it to the next guy. And then you would have a max loss of 20000 less the premium. Right? Difference in the strikes, less the premium. Mm -hmm. Ah, nah. Yeah, and the stock went to 120. You know, he lost $100,000. Like, you know. But like, you know, I wish I lived in it. He said, ah, no big deal, Dean. I could use the loss. <laughs> I said, man, I wish I lived in your world. In my world, that's a lot of money. Now, again, in a debit spread, what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, I want to lower my out-of-pocket cost because if I lower my out-of-pocket cost, I lower my risk. I lower my risk because I won't need as much to break even. I won't need as much downward volatility. And then am I going to have a lower risk because I can lose whatever I pay, right? So in a debit put spread... What I'm trying to do is lower my out-of-pocket costs by selling a lower strike put to help me pay for the higher strike. Okay. And then we said, this is just really stupid. Right? I mean, that is just really dumb. Right? Because if all you do is a naked, uncovered call, what kind of risk do you have? Unlimited. And this is the one I just showed you. Right? And if I was taking a Series 4 or a Series 9, that's one of my all-time favorite transactions. If I say, what is your customer? Why does your customer want me to prove him to do spreads? And he said, Well, Dean, he's smart enough to know he doesn't want to do a naked call. I said, approved. <laughs> you know, that's a smart kind of a move. So that's how those spreads kind of play out in terms of the strategies. Okay. All right. So let's stop the recording.